Hello and welcome to the Scatterbolt channel. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make the most of your current graphics card. If you're stuck on your RX 570, RX 580, GTX 1650 Super or GTX 1660 Super, and you simply cannot upgrade from your budget graphics card to a higher end one because of fairly obvious reasons in the current graphics card market, then you come to the right place. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to optimize, perform maintenance, and even increase the performance of your current graphics card through my five-step checklist that'll range from things you can do right now for free on your computer up to buying a few extra items for your graphics card that can really help it out in the long run. So uh, first up, let me show you how to do a clean install of the latest graphics card drivers available for your graphics card. If you've installed many numerous different versions of graphics card drivers across the years on your gaming PC, it might finally be time to do a clean install of new graphics card drivers if there's a new update. Removing all previous versions of graphics card drivers from your system for a new install can ensure your graphics card is working at its fullest without having any possible software issues from old partial or corrupted driver installations from your gaming PC. So to do this, we're gonna install this program called Driver Display Uninstaller, and like the name suggests, it's going to remove any previous old graphics card driver software from your gaming PC entirely to make room for a clean slate for a new one. And on top of that, I also want you to actually install the latest graphics card drivers as well if you're using an AMD or NVIDIA card, but don't run either of those processes yet. Just save it, because first we're gonna need to boot into safe mode for our gaming PC. So to do that, it's actually really simple. Just type in system configuration into the Windows search bar, go to boot, select safe mode, and then hit apply. And go ahead and restart your gaming PC. It'll boot into safe mode, and from there, go ahead and extract and run DDU from your downloads folder. And from there, it should automatically detect what your current graphics card driver software is, but if it doesn't, you're just gonna to wanna to select AMD or Nvidia depending on the brand of your graphics card. But once that's all done, all you gotta do is just select clean install, click okay, and it'll do its work. Then go ahead and let that run for a few minutes. And then once your PC finishes and reboots, then go ahead and install the new graphics card driver software from your downloads folder. Before any of that though, I type in consistent configuration again into your Windows search bar and uncheck safe mode from your boot settings, just so whenever your system restarts from installing those new fresh graphics card drivers, you'll go ahead and boot into normal mode and be back to normal. Next, let's put Windows 10 on a graphical diet to lessen the load on your graphics card if you have something that's really low end. So first, go ahead and enable game mode. It won't hurt to enable it. It'll only either help a little bit or a lot, depending on your system, to see if it works for you. Otherwise, let's go ahead and tweak the graphical settings on Windows a little bit and maybe it'll help your graphics performance. So type in view advanced system settings in the Windows search bar and then in the performance box, click settings and then select adjust for best performance and hit apply. And then from there, you can tinker with the different graphical settings available in that panel. This is what I like to use to have a blend between graphics and performance inside my Windows environment, but you're welcome to test and see if it actually helps you or not. Otherwise, if those don't work, go ahead and completely reset your gaming PC. So like reinstall Windows, which you can type in reset this PC into your Windows search bar and get started with that. And it's gonna be similar to doing a clean install of the graphics card drivers. But in this case, it'll delete everything from your gaming PC. So back up anything you wanna have saved. Now let's talk about maintenance for better longevity for your graphics card. And first, I want you to assess the current graphics card temperatures that are running through your system. I think a lot of you may be overlooking the amount of airflow you're actually providing to your graphics card, which if you can, make sure it's running cool enough because if it runs too hot for too long, you could possibly sacrifice the longevity of it. I mean, it sounds kind of obvious, but there's an easy way to look out for this. Install this program called Hardware Monitor and go ahead and open it before you play whatever your favorite PC game is at the moment. And what Hardware Monitor will do is in the background as you play your game, it'll log a min and max of the different temperatures found in your gaming PC all the way from your SSDs to your CPU, but to importantly for this tutorial, your graphics card. 
So after playing your favorite game for a bit, go ahead and look at hardware monitor and see what the max temperature was for your graphics card. If the max temperature recorded is not going above 60 degrees Celsius, you are totally good. No worries on that front. But if it's between 60 and 70 degrees Celsius, just go ahead and make sure there's no dust in your PC case where the like front panel is or the case fans are, or maybe even consider going with new fans, but it's nothing serious at the moment. If your max temperature is between 70 and 75 or 80 degrees Celsius, you're still good, but I would assess if your graphics card is getting enough air in the first place. Maybe something could be blocking the front panel of your case or your gaming PC could be like on a carpet floor where it's having trouble sucking in clean air. Just kind of look at that. But if your graphics card has a max temperature above 80 degrees Celsius, I would seriously consider getting either new case fans for your PC case to bring in fresh air into your graphics card or as a last result, repaste the thermal paste inside your graphics card, which we'll be talking about now. So if your graphics card is two or three years old, or if you bought it used from someone else, I would really look into actually repasting the thermal paste in your graphics card because sometimes over time it can dry up and it can reduce the thermal conductivity between the graphics card chip and the cooler on top of your graphics chip card. Yeah, you get the idea. Sometimes replacing the thermal paste alone can lead to lower temperatures of five degrees Celsius or even better. So I definitely recommend it if you've had your graphics card for a long time, you haven't touched it at all, and you just need to give it a little like juice, or in this case, extra thermal conductivity so it can better dissipate heat. Now, of course, I can't cover how to take apart every graphics card known to mankind in this single video. So what I recommend is actually Googling how to repaste your graphics card that's in your system and see if there's a tutorial online for how to do that. Otherwise, if you have a basic EIB card like what I have here from Zotac, it should be fairly straightforward to take apart because there'll just be a bunch of screws on the back you need to take off, remember what goes where, and then you can eventually take off the cooler, go ahead and use some isopropyl alcohol and clean off the old thermal paste from the cooler and the chip, and then get your new thermal paste, put it on the chip, so a little dot will do, put the cooler back on, screw everything back into place, and you should be good. And I'd really only look up tutorials for how to take apart a card and repaste it if you have like a Founders Edition card or a reference model card from AMD or NVIDIA, because those are a little more complex and technical. But if you have a basic AIB card like what I have here, it should be fairly straightforward. So on that note, I'll go ahead and leave links in the description below on thermal paste I'd recommend for repasting your graphics card on top of some new case fans if you wanna look into that for your PC case. And then finally, if you've exhausted all the options above, I really recommend into looking into overclocking your graphics card because out of this whole list, that'll definitely be your best bet as far as increasing the frames per seconds for your gameplay. So the way we'll do this is through MSI Afterburner, which works for both AMD and Nvidia cards, though for AMD cards, you can also use the Radeon software, but I don't exactly have time to go into a deep dive for that. So I'll just stick it to MSI Afterburner. And then to stress test our overclocks, we'll install this software called Furmark, which will run a heavy load on your graphics card. And essentially, if your system crashes with Furmark running in the background, your overclock is not stable. But if it doesn't, then you're good. And you just have to see if your graphics card is running too hot or not. And if you're thinking that overclocking your graphics card will reduce its lifespan, if this makes you feel any better, specifically with MSI Afterburner or really with any overclocking software, you can actually toggle on your overclock before you game, and then you can toggle it off when you're done gaming. So you can just have that increased frequency and voltage and heat just while you're gaming, and then you can turn it off for normal use. So hopefully that'll put a little bit of anxiety to rest if you're concerned about that. So to overclock your graphics card through MSI Afterburner in a minute or less, Go ahead and slide the power limit slider all the way up or a little bit less than 100% depending on your tolerance and then increase the core clock by 20 megahertz and the memory clock by 100 megahertz and then run Furmark. If your system is stable and the temperatures look good, then go ahead and increase that core clock and memory clock again by another 20 and 100 megahertz and rinse and repeat until your system crashes when you run Furmark again or just look online on Google and see what other people have accomplished with overclocking their graphics cards through MSI Afterburner. 
and just see if you can replicate the same results while again staying within safe temperatures, which we covered in the maintenance section just before this. If you built a gaming PC and you haven't activated it yet, what are you doing? <laughs> just go ahead and head over to vipsedkey.com and purchase yourself a Windows 10 Home or Pro key for your gaming PC so you can get rid of that activate Windows 10 watermark. And while you're at it, if you want to use my discount code VIPSCATTER, you can get an extra 20% off your order and you can get yourself an affordable Windows 10 key for anywhere from like 10 bucks to 15 bucks. So really good stuff. So that is it for today's video. And I want to give another thank you to Zotac for sending over this really cool RTX 3070 Ti from them. And again, if you want to actually check out the cool things about this specific RTX 3070 Ti, if you find it in a pre-built that you're looking at, I'll have it linked in the description below, along with everything else I've talked about in this video. But for you guys who made it to this point in the video, I have something special for you. I'll go ahead and answer one of your questions from the comment section of my last video. So you have a chance of making it in the video. And for today's question, I have from OPRAGA. I know this is off topic, but do you know the best way to get a set? The <laughs> I know this is off topic, but do you know the best way to get a 3070 right now? I do. And it's called getting a pre-built gaming PC. <laughs> and that is it for our first Q&A of my upcoming videos. If you want a chance to get in, ask your questions in the comment section below. Both all that said, thank you so much for watching. And this is the Scatterbolt channel, signing out.